What is up? I am Crypto Mason and welcome back to the Crypto Mason YouTube channel. I have returned folks. I was on a small little break there, but we are back and we've got some very good stuff today. Um, back for another daily market update. I'm going to continue doing these every single day so that you can get my unique perspective on the entire market and everything that's happening in the market. But you guys are the gold squad. Shout out to all the gold squad members. Make sure you drop a comment hashtag gold squad in the comments. Um, we look for gold in every aspect of our lives and we always find it folks. Let's skip all the talking and get right into it. Make sure you drop a like on the video as well. I really appreciate that. That is the biggest way you can support me for free is just leave a like and leave a comment. Um, and watch to the end of the videos, of course. Bitcoin, 35,949. So basically we had Bitcoin Miami, right? A lot of cool clips out of that. A lot of weird clips out of that. If you've been watching on TikTok. There's a couple weird clips, but for the most part, amazing event. It looked amazing. Um, next year, I will be there 100%. 100%. Now, so nothing happened to the Bitcoin price, basically. So 35000 2700 I mean, we're still just like below these key levels of 3000 and 40000 If we can cross these on both Bitcoin and Ethereum and just head back up. Market cap, $1.65 uh, trillion. XRP is still below a dollar. Um, it's letting some people in under a dollar. I mean, if you've got a lot of money, like thousands and thousands of dollars to invest, under a dollar XRP is not that bad. It's not that bad if you've got thousands. But for, for smaller uh, bags, you probably want to wait for another dip. I don't know. That is up to you. Let's check the biggest gainer. Uh, for me, I'm not... What I'm doing right now, I'm just holding everything. I'm holding everything. Some of these dips aren't enough for me to really buy in. But, I mean, if we see more Ethereum dips, I will be buying. Um, Theta Fuel is the biggest gainer. Wow. And Theta. See, they're moving together now. Wow. Tezos, Digibyte. Not a fan of Digibyte. I am a fan of Tezos. I actually buy NFTs on Tezos. Um, I have an NFT collection, and it's on Tezos. So, maybe I'll do a video showing that. Leave a comment if you want to see that eventually. Now, as for Bitcoin dominance, we're at 41.52. We shot up and now we're on a downtrend. Um, hopefully trending all the way down to 30% so we can see some big, big movement um, on altcoins. What is the Ethereum London fork? So, today we've got a bunch of stuff. We've got Donald Trump calling Bitcoin a scam and there's a clip of it. We've got the Bank of England. We've got... Um, Kevin O'Leary saying that trillions of dollars could flow in. We've got XRP and HBAR near the end. But what is the Ethereum London hard fork? This is important to know because I believe this is coming up. I don't know if there's a set date, but it says coming soon after the April 2021 Berlin hard fork, which we already had. Just to go over this, basically the Ethereum network will set transaction fees with a base fee for each block rather than bidding on gas prices. So this has a lot to do with gas and um, the fees. And basically, I think they burn the fees. So there's a deflationary aspect that's being added to Ethereum. And they're, they're burning the fees instead of giving it to the miners, I believe. Um, I still have to study up on this. I highly recommend this um, Binance Academy. They have a ton of good, good resources. Um, but that is coming. So that is something to look forward to. It's a deflationary aspect added to Ethereum, and that's always good. Here we also have two insane pieces of news for Bitcoin. The El Salvador president wants Bitcoin as legal tender. So basically, he has came out and said that they possibly are looking to make Bitcoin legal tender um, in El Salvador. And then after El Salvador announced that, so we're literally seeing countries wanting to adopt Bitcoin right now. That's a country. Now, Paraguay. Paraguay, after El Salvador announced that, they said they're, they could be ready to embrace Bitcoin as well. And this dude, this is a congressman, a uh, Paraguay congressman. Look, he came on Twitter with laser eyes right here, um, and he hashtagged Bitcoin and PayPal. So we're literally seeing countries adopting Bitcoin. This is some of the most bullish news and craziest news of 2021 for sure. Now, we've got an update on XRP lawsuit right here. 
the SEC has filed another request for extension of time until Friday, June 11, to respond to Ripple's motion to compel uh, the SEC to turn over the internal BTC, ETH, and XRP documents. Judge Netburn twice told them to turn over. So they have requested a stupid extension again, again. You know, they, as you know, they, uh, they requested another extension before until like August. So, I mean, I, I really hope that this isn't one of those lawsuits that goes on for years and stuff. But we'll see what happens. I mean, here's the Trump news right here. Trump calls Bitcoin a scam. Adver advocates for dollar hegemony. Hegemony. Now watch this. Here's the clip. Um, basically, we just got to watch the clip. Look what he says. You one last question. You don't like Bitcoin? You wouldn't invest in Bitcoin? Do you invest in the stock market at this moment? So not at this moment. I think it's high. Uh, so I have not invested in the stock market at this moment. I have in the past, but I have not at this moment. Okay, I like that part of it. I like that part of it. Let's see what he says about Bitcoin. I think it's high. Okay. Uh, Bitcoin I, I just seems like a scam. Uh, I was surprised. You know, with us, it was at 6000 and uh, much lower. I don't like it because it's another currency competing against the dollar. Essentially, it's a currency competing against the dollar. I want the dollar to be the currency of the world. That's what I've always said. Okay, one last question. Very interesting right there from Donald Trump. Um, what do you guys think? If he would have said that he's bought Bitcoin, what do you think the effects would have been? I don't know. Here's the Bank of England saying that stable coins should be regulated. And basically... This discussion paper sets out the bank's emerging thoughts on new forms of digital money. I'm talking about stable coins, CBDCs. The document is there. Um, it's a discussion paper, whatever that is, a discussion paper. Um, but yeah, of course, stable coins are going to be regulated. Uh, that makes sense. But I mean, how do you how do you really do that when you've got like private stable coins? That's going to be interesting to see how that works. Um, we have Kevin O'Leary saying that trillions, if you don't know Kevin O'Leary, he's a famous billionaire, trillions of dollars, trillions with a T, could descend on Bitcoin once it clears this hurdle. And the hurdle that he's talking about is ESG issues. Now, this is what ESG is right here. ESG means environmental, social, and governance. So I think he's specifically talking about the environmental, but he says, watch here, right here. I talk to institutions every day. They're not going to buy Bitcoin until this ESG issue is resolved. And you saw that with, with Tesla, right? They withdraw their, or they sold, they basically traded Bitcoin for profit and then they stopped accepting it because of, because of ESG issues, basically. Um, I didn't know this ESG term until today when I read this. Uh, there's no flexibility, they have no choice. They've already decided that they're gonna stay within the covenants of their ESG community committees. So, I mean, that makes sense to me. Just makes sense. But will Bitcoin ever get over those issues? Or, I mean, will they ever get over those issues? I think they should just start looking at Ethereum. Um, and he even says that here. Maybe I need a ramp to put my fiat into Ether or whatever. Um, also, don't forget that Mark Cuban said that he's an Ethereum whale. He literally said that. Uh, we featured that in one of the videos before. Speaking of Ethereum, though, balances of Ethereum on, on crypto exchanges hits a two-year low. From Glassnode right here. Glassnode is a great website for uh, on-chain analysis. Basically, nobody's holding their Ethereum on uh, exchanges. The lowest amount since June 2019. Um, so HODL ETH, that's what I'm doing. I know for sure I am contributing to this. Um, my Ethereum balance is not on an exchange uh, because I plan to hold it along for very long term. My Ethereum is on my ledger, actually. Here we've got the Winklevoss twins saying that we are Bitcoin hodlers until at least five, uh, at least 500,000. Uh, we think Bitcoin is gold, gold 2.0. It will disrupt gold, so its market cap has to be 10 trillion or more, because that's the market cap of gold. That doesn't really make sense, but I like that. <laughs> um, I like 10 trillion as a target. 
And that's cool. Crypto is coming for more than 10 trillion. 10 trillion is just a sliver, basically. Like, not that much. If you know what, what even XRP is going for, or something with global uh, trade and finance like XDC, that's like 17 trillion. There's a lot of money in this world, folks. And I think it'll all be on the blockchain eventually. That's the, that's the long-term vision here. All of it. Everything will be on the blockchain. And that's a whole separate video on what that leads to because it's scary, right? Everything is tracked, logged, and you're chained to a block. Um, that's what that would mean. So we'll see what happens. We've got XRP CRO right here um, with a direct quote from, from Brad Garlinghouse on... Because you got to remember, Ripple's being sued at Brad and Chris. Chris Larson and Brad Garlinghouse are also being sued individually. He says, Chris and I had the option to settle separately. This is from, this is old, by the way, December 2020. Had the option to settle separately. We could do that and it would all be behind us. That's how confident Chris and I are that we are right. We will aggressively fight and prove our case. So, I mean... I hope Ripple wins their lawsuit and then maybe like Brad and Chris just get fined, maybe? I mean, that seems like a viable option. Maybe they just get, maybe they all just get a big fine or something. I don't know. Here we've got Jordan Fried. Here's the Hedera news right here. Not really news, but just really interesting. Um, Hedera is being leveraged by Starling Lab. And basically what this is, it's the trust layer to the internet. They're using verifiable truth in storing the most important digital records in human history, which are photos and videos. So Hedera is being leveraged to really provide verifiable truth because how are we gonna keep these photos alive when AI comes in, right? And, and deep fakes and all that crazy stuff. How do we verify that these are real photos and real videos? It's gonna get crazy. And that's what Hedera is here to do just one use case just one use case and he says tears and chills watching this and if you do watch this i only watched a little bit um to real kind of just understand what it is um but i'm gonna watch the whole thing of introducing the starling lab but that is all we have for today i appreciate you if you're still watching right now if you're watching right now i'm here with you right now <laughs> i'm a real person um Speaking of real person, there's going to be some robots online and we're going to need that verifiable truth because I think they're going to they're going to AI some people or they're going to use deep fakes and uh, make it so that some people said some things that they didn't. And it'll be AI um, and it'll be it'll be hard to prove without something like this. <clears throat> but that is all we've got. Make sure you drop a subscribe, drop a follow on Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. I love you all. Shout out to the Gold Squad. I am back um, on this channel. And goodbye. Crow,